I have got a ventilation problem, and today I intend to fix it. Hey everyone, welcome back to Lab Coats. So today's video is going to be a little bit different from my usual style of video. Instead of pre-filming everything and all that, I'll be kind of giving you a more one-on-one -on -one style video of me basically going through the process of building a fume hood to help my garage be a safer workplace for me whenever I'm dealing with chemicals. I've had a lot of complaints, well, not really complaints, but valid warnings, we'll say, from concerned people who realize that what I'm doing is potentially either dangerous in the case of toxic gases like nitrogen oxides or hydrogen sulfide, or unpleasant for the people indoors in the case of things like thioacetone or, again, hydrogen sulfide. That's more dangerous to people indoors, but in small amounts it's more of a stinky thing than anything. Regardless, today we'll be building a fume hood, and I guess I'll just be walking you through the process. So, let's get started. Alright, so let me give you kind of a brief overview of what I'm kind of planning here. So... Yeah, that's pretty much the plan for now. I'll just be placing my little microphone here in case I need to say anything. This is the particle board I was talking about. So I think for right now I'm going to chop off about, this is a, it's a, 48 inch by 24 inch board. I'm going to chop off about 12 inches of it to make it 36 by 24, which is the desired dimensions that I have for the fume hood. So, let's get chopping. Well, Mike's going to have a heyday with this. Wonder what the mic caught. Two down. Uh, I don't even know. One more to go. Oh wait. Yeah, still two. So kind of where I'm at right now is I need to figure out how these pieces of wood are actually going to go together so I can figure out how to cut whichever ones need to be further cut. Um, these two go on the sides. I'm going to need the top to be kind of pushed back a little. I'm just going to need a moment to think about it. <laughs> A few moments later. It took me three hours, but I figured it out. We just need to shave off about half an inch from this board right here so that this one can fit correctly. There's like right now, there's a bit of a gap. So yeah, that's it. Just need to cough a little bit more. Here's basically what I'm thinking. This is a little cutoff section. I'll show you what I mean. There's gonna be this little gap here, and this is where the, the window part, that's where this is gonna go. So I need to cut a groove in here for that to rest in. So right now I'm just gonna use this as kind of a template to see where I need to cut the groove, and then I'll mark it and use the table saw to cut it out. 
Let's see how it goes. Basically, this whole area here needs to be cut. Like, maybe a quarter of an inch deep. Just good enough for it to allow the thing to slide in. Okay, so just did like a quick little test fit here to make sure everything's, you know, fitting. Uh, the grooves are spot on, but there is a bit of a overhang here because this piece of acrylic is 36 inches and the area that it's going to be fitting in is less than that. So. I knew this was coming, but I'm not very excited about it. I'm going to have to cut some of the acrylic down. Not sure why the recording cut out. It's just a dumb thing the stupid camera tends to do, but obviously the cut came out all right. All right, so everything went well with the acrylic. Um, now I'm going to go and screw a bunch of the wood stuff together. I'm probably gonna omit a lot of that uh, footage just because I don't wanna film myself screwing a thousand screws into a bunch of particle board. Um, I'll throw in a bit of footage, but yeah. Day two, and we are basically done with the body of the fume hood. So, um, yeah, there's really not much to say. I basically just screwed all the wood pieces together and tried fitting the, the acrylic shield in front. The grooves that I cut work really nicely. I'm actually quite proud of that. So now, basically just have to gonna install the handle right here on the acrylic. I'm gonna have to cut some holes in the top for the ventilation and all that. And install the fan, obviously, and the hoses to take all the air out. And also cut some like holes in the sides over here for power wires to feed through. I'm gonna have like a uh, whatever those things are called. I'll show it on the screen here. One of those things. Um, I'm gonna have that on the inside so that all the um, like the hot plates and anything that I want inside there can turn on. 
but it'll be sealed with like a, I think it's called a grommet. It's like a rubber thing. It's got like, I don't know. I'll show a picture again. Here it is. That thing. Okay. Stick one of those on there. That's pretty much the plan for right now. I guess I can kind of show some of the components here. I got the fan here. It's things. It's from Vivo Sun. I think it's meant for like plants and stuff like that. But let's see. That'll go right there, and this will go right around here. I've got my computer here, which is what's recording the audio. Uh, yeah, I'll have a hose hooking that up there. So, yeah, let's get to that. So a lot of the fume hood is sealed fairly well and it probably won't matter a whole lot, but to be safe, I'll be sealing a lot of the cracks and stuff with some of this adhesive caulking. Uh, I considered silicone, but I really wanted to be able to paint over like a lot of the wood stuff. This is paintable, so that's what I'm going to be using. So I'll just take this off real quick and a little bit around there to make sure everything's sealed. You know the other thing that sucks about working in a garage, besides the ventilation? It gets brutally hot. It's so one thing I don't like about Oklahoma so much. The summers are terrible. At least when it comes to heat. It's probably like 100, 110 in here at this point. I know everyone's gonna lose their mind if I don't do this, so...
Beautiful. Tiny Rick! Okay, now I'm going to install the electrical plugs. That's fun, right? I'm going to be installing them right up here, closer to the front. And unlike a lot of my decisions, this one's actually for a good reason. Um, if it's in the back and I need to say, I don't know, unplug like a hot plate or something really fast because something's getting out of control or whatever, then I don't want to be reaching over all of the glassware and stuff to try and get to that. I'd much rather have it right here so I can just pull the plug when I need to. I finally got these little grommets in the mail today. So yeah, probably put this somewhere up here and then I'll try to install some of this. That's pretty good. It's another day, another shirt, still the same hat. <laughs> so I got all the caulking sealing done on the body of this thing. And now basically the only thing I have left to do is just give it a quick spray coat of uh, white paint. And also, this came in the mail today. Got some nice LED lights. So I'll be installing those in there. I'm actually pretty excited about this. Won't have to worry about the whole lighting setup that I usually have to do for videos. So yeah, paint coat, lights, and of course the power bar, basically already installed it with the screws and finally this little grommet here for the power connections to feed through. After that, I'd say we can actually put it through its paces. I got kind of a fun plan for that, but uh, we'll see what happens. Let's get painting. Hey, look, it's done. So that can of paint went on way better than the spray paint ever did. Yeah, now it's time to install the grommet for the electronics, actually install the electronics, you know, the, the power supply bar. And uh, that, I think that'll basically be it. Let's finish this thing up. Kills me standing on my knees. Let's see what kind of mess I can make. Already ruining my perfect paint job. That's fun. Oh, joy.
It's done. Took me four or five days. I had to take another break in there because uh, it was Father's Day. But, actually no, it's not true. Today's Father's Day. What am I saying? I got the LEDs installed up along here. I still need to do a little bit of wire management with like the power supply and all that. But overall, I think this is pretty much complete. I also put some little pins in here to help the hood stay where it's supposed to. But uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. So now I'm thinking about a good way to test it. And I figured we'll be better than cracking out the old samples of isocyanides. These are, in case you don't know what isocyanides are, these are basically the stinkiest chemicals in the world. And if I can't smell them in this garage whenever I'm running the hood, I'd say it's a pretty good metric for efficiency. Obviously, whenever you're working with something that's genuinely toxic, you'd still want to be wearing like a respirator for any sort of small exposures that might somehow get out of this. But yeah, this should really serve as some kind of way of seeing just how efficient this is at getting fumes out of the garage. Also, for the one final test, I'm thinking I'll make a quick batch of chlorine gas because that's not, I'm, people are gonna get mad at me saying this, but it's not too toxic. It's not something that's going to poison you. It's more, it's extremely corrosive and if you breathe it in, it can really mess you up. It's also something that you, you can smell at a very low concentration. So if I make a small amount of it, like I've done in this garage for, I don't know, 50 times at this point, um, I should be able to smell it. It's also a good uh, thing to test in here because it's a heavy gas. So if anything's gonna be able to get out of this hood, it'd be something like chlorine gas because it's heavier, it'd be able to sink out and, you know, come out of the opening down here. So if it can't do that, then I'd say we have a working fume hood and we're ready to move on to some more interesting substances. Let's go. All right, I've got the isocyanide set up back here. I got the hood closed and everything. And now I'll just turn on the lights and get the fan running. Probably have to turn the exposure down. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna set the mic down and see if I can smell anything. All right. This is the N-butyl isocyanide from my isocyanide video, and it is, frankly, one of the most horrible smelling chemicals I've ever dealt with. And, yeah, I can't smell it. Opening it up, just nothing. You can even get my face, like, right up to the fume hood opening. Yeah, I can't, I can't smell anything. Let's see, let me open some more of them. This looks like the tarred up remains of the phenyl isocyanide. That's also a pretty rank one. Oh boy. That'll be fun trying to get back on there. I better not get any of this on my gloves because that's going to be a problem. Still no smell. Yeah, nowhere in the garage does it smell like isocyanides. So, yeah, that's a win. Let's try something a little bit more extreme. All right, just as a reminder, never do anything that you see me do on this channel. This is, it's not, it, it, I mean, it should be perfectly safe considering the fume and everything, but yeah, don't usually mix bleach and acid really ever <laughs> unless you want chlorine gas for reaction i guess
Preferably, though, I would just use the chlorinating tablets, but, you know, to each their own. Let's see what this does. There's your chlorine. No smell so far, so that's pretty good. I'll really only be able to tell if I get like a big rush of chlorine though, so well, let's try it. Oh my gosh, I can see a jet of chlorine. The whole fume hood's turning green. But no smell. Look at that. I walked around the whole garage and I can't smell anything. No chlorine smell whatsoever. I would call this a huge success. Look at all that. I'd call that a pretty big success. Going forward, I definitely feel a lot safer handling things like hydrogen sulfide or any kind of powder that might be potentially dangerous to inhale inside this hood. Um, but on that note, I would like to address some of the concerns people have had with my safety. So if you don't know, in my last video, I made phosphoryl chloride and I accidentally got my eyes somehow irritated by the vapors probably because I wasn't wearing safety goggles. I was today though, so. And yeah, before that, in the last video, I made an analog of caffeine that's about 10 times stronger than regular caffeine, and I accidentally took 10 times the dose I was planning to. So, I haven't always been the safest here on YouTube, but I wanna change that, I wanna do better because I don't want to be the random smallish YouTube channel who does just stupid things for views, does like the quick one-step reaction and it creates a deadly gas to irritate the FBI or whatever, you know. Uh, I, don't, I don't want that to be my legacy on YouTube. No shame in to anyone else who's, that's their thing, but you know, that's, it's not really my thing. I definitely like to handle these dangerous chemicals, I like to show them to people who don't normally get to see them, but I want to do so in a safe fashion that's not putting my health at risk or anyone else who's living in this house. So yeah, I'm very glad to have the fume hood. I will be doing some more dangerous things in it in the future, but yeah, I'm hoping to be a lot safer about it while doing it on a fairly small scale and, you know, keeping everybody healthy. Uh, aside from that, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's it, basically. <laughs> I just wanted to apologize for my unsafe actions. The only reason I really put in the videos was because I figured people could learn from my mistakes and, you know, hopefully get something out of it. I mean, I've seen people make things like phosphoryl chloride on YouTube, but nobody's ever had the kind of reaction that I had to it, so, I mean, Showing that to people seems like something that would be smart. I mean, if they see that it can do that, put you in the hospital because of its vapors, I mean, that seems like something people should know. So yeah, that's why I put out these videos so people can learn about it. Obviously there is the clickbaity factor of, you know, I got, I got sent to the ER because, you know, I did this, but you know, I don't want that to be my legacy. I don't want to be the guy who does dumb stuff just to do dumb stuff. I want to conquer these dangerous chemicals in a fairly safe way and, you know, still be, still have fun with it. So pardon me if I sound kind of unamused or nonchalant whenever I talk about, you know, potentially losing my vision or overdosing on a stimulant. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, uh, I don't know, I'm not a very expressive person on camera, I guess. So, yeah.
that's basically all. Just wanted to apologize and say that going forward, I'm hoping to be a lot safer with how I do things on this channel. And this fume hood will definitely be helping with that. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel because I have a ton of videos coming out that I'm sure you don't want to miss. Obviously, the one I've been talking about a lot recently is making a legal analog of methamphetamine, which, if you don't know, it's something that you can get off the shelf at Walmart without even needing an ID, so it should be perfectly fine to show on YouTube. The only reason I'm really doing it is because I thought it would be a fun way to experience cooking without, you know, actually doing anything illegal. So that's the only reason I'm doing that. Also, I'll be working with a chemical that is potentially more explosive than azido azide azide. And yeah, <laughs> I think that speaks for itself. It's a compound that has a higher nitrogen ratio than azido azide azide. And in theory, that probably makes it a lot more explosive, but we'll see. It's never been shown before on YouTube, so another first. At this point, I'd like to extend a huge thanks to all my patrons on Patreon. I am very grateful for all of your support, and yeah, I, that's really it, man. Dang it. I wish I could say more, but I am sweating. You can, come on. It's like 110 in here. I need to buy an AC unit. <laughs> uh. Thank you to all the patrons. Thank you everyone who's watched. I'll catch you next time. Lab coats, out. <laughs> I'm gonna go take a long, cold shower and change into something a little bit cooler. And then I'll get a haircut and shave my face because Yeah. I said left coats up. Video's over. <laughs>